Hey, what's up? Sean here, and today I'm making another requested web shooter. This time, it's the Scarlet Spider web shooter from Spider-Man PS4. With Spider-Man No Way Home just around the corner, I thought it would be a great time to make another Spider-Man web shooter, especially since everybody is so excited about Spider-Man right now, including me. <laughs> Plus, it seems like a lot of you really liked my first Spider-Man PS4 web shooter, which got a whopping 7.8 million views. I made this web shooter using pretty simple materials like paper, foam, popsicle sticks, magnets, and uh, other cheap materials that are pretty easy to find. Also, this is actually pretty easy to make. I made a free template for this that you can find in the description box below. So if you wanna make your own Scarlet Spider web shooter at home, or you're just too lazy to make your own and you wanna watch me make it, keep watching. Real quick, before that though, we have a sponsor for this video. Guys, I'm super excited that Mech Arena is sponsoring this video. Seriously, I'm not kidding. I'm actually a huge fan of this game and let me show you why. Mech Arena is a new third person mech shooter where you can get into a mech and battle it out with other online players globally in a variety of different fast paced game modes. As soon as you pick up this game, you'll immediately notice how balanced and competitive it is. I mean, for real, skill actually matters in this game. Now there's tons of different mechs to unlock and upgrade. Each mech has unique abilities and can be customized with dozens of different weapons to match your playstyle. I've been playing this game a lot, so let me show you one of my favorite mechs, which is Killshot. I like this mech because it has a super aggressive playstyle. It has an ability called Melee Dash, which allows you to get up close and personal to deal some serious damage. Because Killshot is so good at doing damage, he's not very good at surviving. But hey, that's where skill really matters. Mech Arena is constantly updating the game with tons of fresh new content, and they've got a great login rewards program happening right now, so there's never been a better time to get started. It's completely free to play on both Android and iOS, and if you use my link in the description or scan my QR code, you'll get 1 mil spec skin, 500 day coins, and 70,000 credits to help kickstart your game. Also, feel free to add me as a friend and we can play some matches together. To get started, I made a wristband out of some brown craft foam. My wrist is pretty small, so you might want to make yours longer than 7 inches if your wrist is larger. A good rule of thumb is just make sure you leave about a half inch gap right there because we'll be gluing some stuff underneath later. Next, I'm going to add a trim to the edge of the craft foam using 1.5 inch fabric elastic. But before I can do that though, I just need to paint the fabric, so I mixed up some beige, white, green, and silver acrylic paint until I was happy with the color. Once the paint dried, I contact cemented the fabric to the foam, and as you can see here, I used some painter's tape to make it easier to apply on the contact cement, like this. You really want to make sure that you take your time when you place down the fabric because you only get one shot at this. Uh, once you place it down, that's it. Uh, the contact cement is super sticky and permanent, so just try to go slow and steady and that'll help you get an even trim along the edge. After that, just make sure you put some super glue on the edge of the fabric to make sure nothing frays. And now would be a good time to attach on some Velcro. As you can see, I already cut out a spot for the Velcro in advance, so uh, you might want to do the same as well. Now we're going to go ahead and make the barrel of the web shooter. So for that, I'm going to start with a piece of cereal box cardboard and I'm going to use a hole puncher to make this very tiny little ring. Then I rolled up a small paper tube and cut out a notch right at the center so that a popsicle stick could slide in and out like this. And I covered the whole paper tube in super glue to harden it. These two pieces both have the exact same outer and inner diameter as each other and they get glued together like this. This spring right here is what's going to propel the string out of the web shooter. I'm going to use this spring to roll up a paper tube that has an inner diameter that is slightly larger than the spring's outer diameter so that the spring can slide in and out of the tube freely. And again, I coated the whole tube in super glue. This piece that I'm holding right here is one that you can find on the template and so you can cut that out and use it as a stencil for the little cutout pattern that's on the barrel. After that's all been traced out, you want to make sure you use a super sharp blade on this if you want the cutout to be precise. Once I was happy with that, I went ahead and super glued these two parts together like this. 
Moving on, I cut out a small square out of a popsicle stick and then I carved out two little notches in the popsicle stick as well as a tiny hole right there and here's what it should look like. After that whole thing got covered in super glue, I fed this nylon fishing line through the hole and then tied a loop for my finger securing the loop with super glue. And the idea here is that when I want to shoot the web shooter, I just need to pull on the string and the web shooter will shoot. And uh, you'll, you'll see this whole thing in action later on, of course. So I used a small rubber band to attach the popsicle stick to the barrel and that makes for a simple little release mechanism like this, as you can see. All right, now I'm gonna take a thin bamboo skewer and roll a strip of paper around it. What we're doing right here is making a bullet for the web shooter, which is basically like a little stick that's gonna fly forward and carry all of the string along with it. Here, I just cut out a little notch in the stick and that notch is gonna get caught on the popsicle stick release mechanism that we made prior to this. At this point, I mixed up a very small amount of 5-minute epoxy and I'm going to use that to attach on this little 5x3 magnet on the side which is closest to the notch. And just for good measure, I super glued a small strip of paper around there like that. On the other end of the stick, I wrapped a thin strip of paper until there was enough surface area to where I could glue on this 8x5 magnet, again using 5-minute epoxy. After that dried, I just simply super glued the spring to the bullet. And now you just take another 5x3 magnet, figure out the orientation of it, and then you can attach a string to that magnet using more 5 minute epoxy. Alright, now I can show you a demo of how the web shooter shoots. So first, you insert the bullet into the barrel while the popsicle stick is lowered down, and then release the popsicle stick to lock in the bullet. After that, you attach the string to the back of the bullet, then to fire, just tug on the string and the bullet will blast out, dragging all of the string along with it. Once you're happy with the release mechanism, now would be a good time to paint it. So I started with some Duplicolor Filler Primer, followed by Duplicolor Perfect Match Alabaster Silver, and then a Duplicolor Gloss Clear Coat. The barrel is going to get glued onto the web shooter right there. But before I do that though, I'm just going to cut out a little rectangle in the foam. Uh, basically, I'm just making a little slot that's going to allow the popsicle stick to slide in and out of the barrel, as shown here. Also, I just glued on some popsicle sticks here so that I had a level surface to glue the barrel onto. It really helps if you have one of these needle squeeze bottles because it allows you to get kind of in tight in those hard to reach areas, but it's totally fine if you don't have one. This next piece is super important because it prevents the popsicle stick inside from being pulled all the way out, which would potentially make the rubber band slip off. Notice here that when you insert the bullet into the barrel, it sticks out the back there. Now that, that actually makes it kind of difficult to reload because you aren't able to place your thumb on the back of the barrel. So I found a pretty simple solution to that, which is to use the plastic cap from an empty super glue bottle. And this works perfectly because it's super thin. It leaves enough clearance for the web cartridge to slide over it. But at the same time, it's very strong. So it's not going to crumple when you apply pressure on it. And see, now I can reload it over and over again very easily, which is exactly what I want. On the template, you'll find a piece that looks like this, which you can transfer onto poster board. And notice this line right here and right here, I went ahead and scored those on the back of the poster board with my knife. Same thing here, I scored those lines on the back and doing this will just make it easier to fold later. After that, I took some craft foam and contact cemented the poster board on top of the foam. I went ahead and cut that out and then after that I flipped it over and scored the foam the exact same way I scored the poster board. And again what this will do is just simply make it easier to crease the foam and the poster board so that we can shape it like this. From here there's four little tabs on each corner that need to get cut out and uh, of course this is all marked out on the template for you. After the tabs have been cut out, you want to super glue the corners in an offset position just like I've done here. Here's a little side by side comparison so you can see how they resemble. And go ahead and do that for all four corners of course. Now because we offset the corners, the bottom of this piece is no longer level. So to level it out, I'm just gonna add some craft foam to the corner like that, and then slice off the excess foam until the surface is completely flat. And I did this for all four corners.
Then I cut up little bits of this 1 8 inch wooden dowel and used that to make some fake hardware. After that, I painted this with a Rust-Oleum gloss black and then a Tamiya gloss clear coat. I gave this paint some time to dry and then after that I glued the black piece to the web shooter using contact cement and super glue. Alright, now it's time to make those little gold and red detail pieces you see right there. So what you can do for that is wrap some paper around a toothpick, spiraling the paper downwards like this, and then just harden the paper with super glue, give it a moment to dry, and then you can sand it down until you have a nice smooth dome shape. Do this twice so that you can glue one on each side of this paper tube right here. And if you want, you can sand it down even more to get a more refined shape. For paint, I did a few coats of filler primer, sanding in between each coat with a high grit sandpaper. Then I used a Tamiya Gold, followed by a Tamiya Gloss Clear. While that was drying, I made this very simple black piece that goes together with the gold piece like this. And that whole thing gets glued onto the web shooter right there. I made this red piece the exact same way I made the gold piece, except this one is a little bit larger. And on the tip of that red piece, there's a tiny black ring which I made out of poster board. For the little wiring right there, I cut up the cable of this old USB mouse that I had laying around and that worked perfectly. For the web cartridges, I found a pretty cheap and easy way to do them using some Sharpies. So if you have a bunch of old Sharpies laying around, then you're in luck for this one. But if not, they're pretty cheap and you can get these pretty much anywhere. So I make a mark one and a half inches away from the opening of the tube and then cut that down with a box cutter. Then using the exact same method I showed you before, I made this dome piece and glued that to the end of the Sharpie tube right there. After that, I sanded these two plastic parts, starting with some low grit sandpaper and then slowly moving up to a finer grit sandpaper. This will just make the surface a little bit more suitable for paint. As you can see, there's a little ridge right there and that makes it so that it can snap into the tube like that, which is super convenient because we're gonna use that to make the web cartridge detachable. So I just trimmed that black piece down a bit since I only need the part of the plastic that snaps. Sand it smooth. Then I wrap some paper around the black piece to make it match the diameter of the gray tube. After that, I glue the tip of the Sharpie back on and finally insert a small 1 8 inch wooden dowel into the there like so. You need to make six of these web cartridges plus one here that doesn't have a tip. And I painted these the same way I painted the barrel. Before I glued the cartridges to the web shooter, I made six small little tabs right there and spread them out onto the web shooter like this. As you can see, these popsicle sticks are what I'm going to glue the cartridges onto. So I scratched off the finish of the paint a little bit just for better adhesion and then super glued all six of these onto the popsicle sticks. And voila! Now I can attach and detach the cartridges onto the web shooter very easily using those snaps on the sharpie. Now we're not quite done with the cartridges yet, we still have to make the straps that wrap around the tubes, so for that I used some half inch fabric elastic and painted it with the same acrylic mixture I made earlier. I cut a little slit in the foam where I could feed the fabric through, super glued the strap in place, and then I used contact cement to make all the hoops. The last part of this build is the trigger, which you can also find on the template. The easiest way I found to make the trigger is just to cut it out of craft foam, then imprint the design onto foam using a ballpoint pen. This is kind of optional, but if you want, you can spray a couple coats of black Plasti Dip, and that will give it a more accurate texture. To reload the web shooter, you first need to insert the bullet into the barrel, which you do by pulling on the string, and once the bullet is all the way in, you just let go of the string and the bullet will lock in place. Then take the loose end of the string and wrap it around a ballpoint pen or something similar. After that, simply stuff all that string down into the web cartridge, and once you feed the cartridge into the web shooter, the magnet on the string will automatically snap onto the back of the bullet, and it's ready to fire.
If you liked this video, then you'll probably like my previous video as well where I made an Iron Man missile launcher. Click the screen right here if you want to watch that video. Thank you very much to my patrons for supporting me on Patreon, and thank you for watching this video.